Next, the state treasurer is here to get his opinion about the budget fight and a new tech company with an app that's taking off. This is The Delaware Way. Welcome to The Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. Treasurer Ken Simpler is here. It's an interesting time to be treasurer in the state of Delaware with the budget talk stalemated right now. It, it's, it's fascinating. I'm sure you've been watching what's going on. Watching and to the extent I can, participating and at least giving advice, giving guidance, giving feedback. And so who comes to you for participation? Who comes to you for guidance? Well, you know, it's the treasurer is not directly involved in the budget process, which uh, right. maybe viewers don't know that, but the treasurer uh, does have, I guess, an umbrella of fiscal authority, right? So where I can add value, where I think there are proposals that might put, let's say, another chess piece on the board for people to consider or talk about, particularly if it relates to long-term structural reform. Um, I'm going to volunteer that information. So whether it's legislators, whether it's my peers in the governor's administration, I work very closely with the Secretary of Finance, the Budget Director, um, and of course leaders in uh, the General Assembly. This all affects you though, however. This, this affects what you're going to be able to do and how you can spend money and what money we have in the state. This affects all of us, right? I mean, this affects, I mean, there's a lot of discussion around not just the need to fix this particular budget year. That's critical, obviously. We have to have a budget that, that goes into effect on July 1 that's going to be sound. But there's a lot of discussion around what's causing this? Why, why are we at the, seeming at the table every year with difficulties in meeting next year's service levels in terms of coming up with a revenue package that is predictable and, and not as volatile and, and sufficient? Um, and so there are long-term structural issues here, but unpacking what that means when different people talk about structural reform, you sort of have to ask the next question, what do you mean? The outgoing budget director said that the state of Delaware has to come up with new revenue streams, that the revenue streams they have right now are not sustainable. Do you agree with that? Um, yes, yes and no. Not to give a political answer, but some revenue streams we have are, are, are very sound. Um, and we might rely on them too much. For instance, the personal income tax and the corporate franchise tax are the two taxes that we rely on the most already. Those are the ones we're talking about increasing. Under the new proposals, personal income tax and corporate franchise tax might go from being somewhere in the order of magnitude of you know, 60%-ish of our revenue to potentially 75% of our revenue. So there's a lot of nuance here, but in my personal estimation, the discussion has to be around what do you want the means of your revenue system to look like? How much reliance on personal income? How much reliance on the corporate franchise? Do we want to rely on the abandoned property tax? How do we feel about gross receipts? You're asking a lot tax? of questions and not answering the questions. Sure, so I guess the question, well, if you want to, if you parse the question to me as, what does an ideal revenue portfolio look like? I'll say that's part of the structural problem. If you parse the question to me as, Ken, is it a spending problem? I'll say, yeah, it is also a spending problem because we also lack a fundamental idea around there's two things in spending, right? There's the level and there's the trend. So it's interesting to hear you talk because you are in an interesting position because you are the highest ranking Republican in state government. And the Republicans have a philosophical difference with the, with the governor and the, the budget that has been presented to them. And so you, you, have a, you have an interesting point of view because you need, the, you need the money, the state needs the money, and yet you are part of the Republican Party who is fighting increasing the, the very things you're talking about. And I think, you know, it, it is fair to frame it as two-party system, right? We're a two-party system. But both sides want sustainable levels of spending. You know, um, Republicans don't want a small, ineffective government any more than Democrats want a large, incompetent one. But there is, does have to be a fundamental step back and say, at, a, at, a, at a, the systemic level, what can we afford to spend as a people? What is that tied to, Larry? You know, is that tied to what the whole economy in Delaware is? And what can it grow at? Can it grow at the rate of inflation? Can it grow at the rate of what our personal, spend, personal means are? These are fundamental questions when you ask policymakers the challenge we have is we're so locked into fixing one year that sometimes the overall structure, of, we don't have a handle on it. So we're picking pieces, but we're not talking about the whole puzzle. So you would agree that the, uh, the, the incorporation fees and the, um, and the unclaimed funds are not sustainable? I would say that the corporate franchise, when you say the corporate franchise, is very strong. That's the fact that a lot of the Fortune 500 are domiciled here and you register a limited liability company here because of our court system, because of our legal 
you know, precedents. Um, that is a very strong franchise, and we rely on it, and that's probably fair and appropriate. I have no reason to believe that that is problematic. There's a piece of that. There's competition for that, though. There's competition, but it's not, you know, I don't, I, we never want to overstep where we are, but we, we run a very sound franchise. We offer a very good value for our product. And so far, the indications that I've gotten from the Secretary of State's office is that our market share is not just stable, but it's growing. So you feel that's sustainable, that uh, that, that shouldn't be put in the category of unsustainable? I, I don't think it should be. And what I don't, but, I, but what the piece that people sometimes talk about that is fruit of the same tree is what we call abandoned property. And that piece is more worrisome. That is, that is a function of the fact that because all those corporations are registered here, when that last dividend check doesn't make it to you because you moved addresses, or when we have an overseas owner of stock that just never gets connected with a, with a payment that they were supposed to receive as some kind of distribution from a company, that kind of money reverts to Delaware. After a period of time, it's called abandoned property, and it becomes a source of our revenue. Now, when that was 1% or 2 or 3% of our revenues in general fund, that was one thing. When it gets to be 15 or 16% or 12% or 11%, I get more worried about it. End of the day, a business model that relies on other people not finding their money is not a great business And it's model. probably worrisome that you have several states suing you saying that that money belongs to us. There's always going to be core disputes around this kind of found money. There's no doubt about it. Now, the legal precedents are very strong on our side, but at the end of the day, I'm more worried about technology. How hard is it going to be in the future to connect you to small pieces of your money? When you don't spend the last six bucks on your gift card right now, it goes unexpired. It might revert to Delaware. But in the future, it's going to be on your device. So your concern is that I might end up getting the money that's owed to me? Well, that's the business. And you don't get to take it? That's what I don't like about the business model, right? I just right. said it. It's fundamentally unsound to have a business model that's based on other people not being able to get connected to their money. Uh, that's not a business model I like technologically. It's not a business model that I personally like, you know, sort of philosophically. And, and so you would agree that right now, either we have to cut spending or that we have to come up with a new way of, of increasing the revenue. When people ask me, is it a spending problem or revenue problem, I say yes. It is both. The portfolio that we have over the last couple of years in particular has slowed. Its growth hasn't slowed. Now, revenues are not down. You will hear Delaware and speak about revenues being down. Revenues are not down, but they're flat. So if your tax revenue and all the income you rely upon is not growing, well, let's face it, our expenses, Republicans aren't saying our expenses shouldn't grow. We know that inflation grows, price levels increase, population increases. Even if Delaware is only growing at 1%, we're still growing. So our needs to provide services to Delawareans are going to grow. So the cost is going to go up. What Republicans have a concern with is what is the rate of growth that we should tie our spending to, because that's not a discussion we have, and is the level we're already at the right level? We don't exercise enough introspection or examination of the spending we have to say we're getting a good value. We're not all Republicans and Democrats about lower spending or higher spending, but we're all about good value. If we spend a lot and get great results, I can find conservatives that will support that. If we spend a little and get a lousy bargain, I would hope I could find progressives who would be upset about that. So to me, the nexus is around what are we getting for the spending? And that's another big part of the discussion that gets left on the table when we just fight about too much revenue or too little revenue or too much spending or too little. It's the combination. We'll, we'll continue our conversation with Treasurer Ken Simpler in a second and talk about his upcoming run for governor <laughs> when the Delaware Way continues. <laughs>